learning check about ADH. Here is a review of when you've seen this before. Antidiuretic hormone is from the posterior pituitary triggered by angiotensin, also in response to low blood pressure, although we'll see other stimuli for it as well. So low blood pressure, high osmolarity, um, and high sodium specific, specifically, all cause this release. And it's going to result in water reabsorption by the kidneys directly, so without sodium, and therefore increased blood volume. So we saw this before in regulation of blood pressure. We also saw this in the endocrine system, right? So hypothalamic um, posterior pituitary releases these neural hormones, one of which is one of the two is vasopressin or ADH or antidiuretic hormone, which is going to act on the kidneys to be, be uh, antidiuretic. The signal for this is um, either high osmolarity or low blood pressure. These are both gonna target different types of mechanoreceptors. So either osmoreceptors or baroreceptors. And then what this is going to do is target our collecting duct. So let's draw this out. So here is our nephron loop and collecting duct. And remember in our nephron loop, we've got the descending loop, which is permeable to water, not solutes. So permeable to water, impermeable to solutes. Our ascending nephron loop is here. This is impermeable to water. So water is going to be reabsorbed in this descending portion. Sodium and chloride are reabsorbed in this ascending portion variable amounts of sodium and potassium secretion, sodium reabsorption and potassium secretion in the DCT. And then our collecting duct is going to be variable in its permeability to water. So all along this piece here is variable permeability. What determines the permeability? Aquaporins, whether they're present or not. So remember the two things we've got to think about if we want something to leave is one, is there a drive for it? Two, are there the proteins to help it get through if it needs them? 